the cost of Quebec spot market purchases of, of water power. That's from a report from the Financial Accountability Office. And the long-term price um, offer for a 20-year deal with Quebec, that's based on a, a, a letter from, uh, from Hydro-Quebec to the government of Ontario. They initially offered us a 20-year contract at six cents. Premier Wynne rejected it. Then they lowered the price to five cents and she still rejected the five cent price offer. And another follow-up question, which was, do the nuclear costs include the cost of waste uh, handling and storage? Well, if you ask um, Ontario Power Generation, they would say they do. Uh, personally, I believe they've underestimated these future costs. So I don't think uh, the, the, the price of nuclear power actually includes the full cost. Uh, for the long-term storage of the spent nuclear fuel. But it, the price does include some of the costs, but, but not, all, not all of it, in my opinion. Um, what would be potential environmental impacts of Quebec imports? Are we talking new dams, uh, new transmission corridors? Well, no, we're not advocating any new dams. Uh, Quebec has a large surplus of, of water power from its existing dams, and, and, and so we're saying that we should use, use the water power that's available from existing dams. We are absolutely not advocating for new dams for two reasons. One, they're not ecologically or socially appropriate. And second, new dams are, new water power facilities are no longer Hydro-Quebec's lowest cost source of new supply. Hydro-Quebec, if it wants a new source of supply, the best option is to invest in energy efficiency, to reduce the demand of its existing domestic customers, to free up more of its heritage hydropower for export to Ontario. And after it's done that, the, the, the lowest cost source of new supply for, for Hydro-Quebec is wind power. Uh, they can produce electricity for, from wind power for about half the cost of, of what would be the cost of building a, a new water power facility. And so, so we're definitely not advocating uh, new dams in Quebec. And in terms of transmission corridors, there was a slide with the three options, uh, three different options that the independent electricity system operator identified. And all of those options would use existing Hydro One transmission corridors. So, so there isn't a need for new transmission corridors. And what about uh, storage capacity? Does Quebec have enough storage capacity to serve both New England and Ontario? Well, it certainly has a, has a very huge storage capacity. And, and, and Hydro-Quebec is, is very, um, um, anxious to provide storage services to to not only New England and New York State, but also to Ontario. And a few folks are are pointing to geothermal and um, geothermal and solar as other options that we could be examining. Are are these viable options for Ontario? Well, yeah, absolutely. Solar. We've got a large solar potential, and you know, recently solar came, the government of Alberta was able to buy solar power at a cost of about 4.8 cents a kilowatt hour, which is a lot lower cost than nuclear. And, and everyone is forecasting the cost of solar will continue to fall. And geothermal, have you considered geothermal? Well, I'm not sure what they mean by geothermal. Some people, when they say geothermal, they're talking about heat pumps to displace natural gas in your home. And that's certainly a, an option that should be pursued to reduce uh, uh, a natural gas uh, consumption in your home for home heating. Uh, geothermal though is often referred to as, uh, as using energy from underground to produce electricity. And I'm not aware that that's a cost effective or a, a viable or a potential option for Ontario. I, I don't believe that we have that resource. And finally, the most pertinent question, 
why isn't the Ontario government doing the great things that you're suggesting? Well, that's a good question. And I think uh, the, the, the main reason is that, well, is that the nuclear lobby in Ontario is very politically powerful. Uh, and that's, you know, why uh, both Premier Wynne, uh, uh, Kathleen Wynne, when she was Premier and Doug Ford now, are pursuing uh, uh, the high cost nuclear rebuilds, uh, despite the fact that there are much lower cost options. And the nuclear industry definitely does not want us to do deals with Quebec, because they know they can't compete on a on a level economic playing field with Quebec. And the nuclear industry also doesn't want us to be um, investing in made in Ontario energy efficiency or renewables, again, because they're now much lower cost options than nuclear power. So that's really what we're up against. We're up against a, a, a nuclear industry that is very politically powerful. And so we have to, we have to work on the opposition leaders to get them co committed to um, changing our electricity direction. Okay, I think that is uh, most of the questions from the chat. There was a couple of observations about pairing wind with hydrogen production as, as another uh, new innovation in meeting our energy needs in a different way, which I think is quite interesting and may uh, become more and more viable. Uh, heat pumps, yes, ground source heat pumps are something that people have pointed to as well. Uh, but I'll leave it at that from the chat. And uh, if people want to raise their hand or click the yes button to ask live questions, uh, we can take those now. So if you want to ask a question, click your yes button in your participant bar, in the participant bar. And I'll see that. Alternatively, you can still make another comment or ask a question in the chat bar. I will send everybody uh, links following up from this webinar because I think most of you pre-registered through me. Oh, here we have one. No. Oh, Jen, I am unmuting you. Go ahead, Jen. This is more, more a comment than anything else. Um, I read last fall that um, uh, air to air heat pumps um, could reduce um, natural, uh, could reduce natural gas or furnace um, uh, use of fuels by about 50%. So I purchased um, purchased a, a heat pump with an SPF, sorry, with an HSPF um, heat heating season performance factor of 9.6, and um, in December they filled up my tank, and it's still three quarters full of uh, my oil tank. So my oil tank kicks in when um, when the temperature dips too low for the uh, for the heat pump but really the heat pump has been far uh, more uh, more of a benefit than uh, than it's um, than the literature says well that's great news Jan and where do you live Manitoulin Island right Mind you, we had a we had a milder winter. I haven't compared it to uh, heating degree days to see, um, you know, the amount of oil I used last year with the amount uh, this year. But certainly, uh, it's been a lot less. And I don't think heating degree days really uh, the difference in heating degree days between the years uh, really accounts for that uh, that much of a difference. Okay, thank you, Jan. Don, you're on. Hi. Um, I just wanted to emphasize that uh, when the Ontario government moves us in the direction of making our electricity dirtier, 
it not only affects the climate, but it affects the municipalities very directly because the municipal governments are trying to reduce their emissions. Most of them have made commitments, uh, de declared climate emergencies. So at this point, if you start dirtying the electricity supply, then all the plans at the municipal level to move to electric vehicles, to retrofit, to do all these kinds of things, uh, depend on electricity being cheaper or being cleaner. And this process of expanding the use of gas-fired plants will reverse what they've achieved. So in Hamilton, where I am, um, they've been uh, tooting their own horn about how much reduction they've had in total uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Almost all of that was achieved as a result of shutting down the coal-fired plants. And they're acknowledging that. So if we turn around and start expanding the, the gas-fired plants, we reverse that and they won't be able to claim achievements anymore. And in fact, this directly hurts them. So there's a very good argument that can be made to municipal councils to oppose the expansion of the gas-fired electricity generation in Ontario as being inimical to the councils themselves, to the municipalities. That's all. Great, and thank you, Don. Um, Mike Bory, you're on. Hello, everyone. Um, I read in the, uh, I sent out a report yesterday from uh, Germany, and this is uh, in answer to the question of uh, solar and whether there's enough sun generated uh, in Ontario. Well, if you look on the, uh, on the world map, you'll find out that Germany's much along the same lines as Canada. Um, the report yesterday was put out from Germany that they attained a 40% level of their power from solar. And these costs are lower than the costs that you were showing, Mr. Gibbons, uh, because the, you, you referred to them as the uh, Ontario uh, access to the price. I would, I, I would venture to say that the price of, of uh, solar, uh, of uh, wind, uh, throughout the world are even lower than what you were showing. Um, the contract that uh, the Ontario uh, uh, said it's uh, got themselves into and then uh, has set the price at a higher artificial price and these prices were set from the, the beginning when the prices of solar and wind were much, much higher. But uh, I, would, uh, I would guarantee you that those prices have rapidly dropped throughout the world. And you'll find that many uh, countries, much the same as Canada, have increased their reliance on wind and solar to a point where you, you're seeing almost 50% in some countries uh, similar to Canada. Yes, Mike, you're correct. And the, 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 the prices that we quoted for Ontario were, were the most recent procur procurement for solar and wind by the government of Ontario, which was four years ago, back in 2016. And you're absolutely right, the, because of technological improvements that the costs have come down significantly. And Bloomberg New Energy Finance is forecasting they'll continue to fall for, for decades. Okay, thank you, Mike. Um, Don, Don, you're on again. I have a question. Um, Jack talked about using the Quebec reservoirs as a battery storage for wind and solar. Can we do that in Ontario? We have a lot of hydroelectricity in this province. Well, we don't have the same huge reservoirs that Quebec does. That's what makes uh, the Quebec hydro system different from ours. They've got these huge reservoirs that can be used, used like batteries for wind and solar, whereas we don't. Jack, I just want to bring up uh, another question from the chat. Uh, essentially saying um, we need to focus on the government as well as the opposition leaders and also pointing out, don't forget about Mike Schreiner, but Clearly, what is the strategy for bringing uh, the Ford government around on these matters? 
Well, it's certainly co correct that we uh, we need to focus on on the on Premier Ford's government too, and so we're we're doing the our best to get that message to him. We do have an online petition for the phase out of the gas-fired power plants uh, by 2030. It's OntarioClimateAction.ca, and if you sign that petition, then an email will go to Premier Ford asking him to uh, to phase out the gas-fired power plants by by 2030. So yes, it's it's also important to um, to put the uh, pressure directly on Premier Ford and all his MPPs, and certainly your local MPP, if he or she is is a conservative. But yes, and but but is, and 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 Mike Schreiner is already 100% on side, so so that that's wonderful. We have one great ally in the legislature already. But our point was just like when we campaigned for the the coal phase out. Uh, we had conservative governments at Queen's Park, uh, Premier Mike Harris, then Premier Ernie Eves. And the way we got them, those conservative premiers, to commit Ontario to a complete coal phase out was getting the support of Mayor Hazel McCallion and getting the support of the opposition leaders, Dalton McGuinty and Howard Hampton. And they put the pressure uh, uh, on, on Mike Harris and, and Premier Eves to do the right thing. And I, I think this is the best way to uh, put the pressure on Doug Ford because his natural inclination is, is not to support uh, renewable e energy or energy efficiency. We have to put a lot of uh, political pressure on him. And, and I think the opposition leaders and, and local mayors can do that. Okay, thank you. Mike Borey, you're on. Whoops. Uh, yes, along the uh, lines of uh, storage, uh, there's not only the storage available in hydro, but uh, the world has made great strides in battery storage too. And the biggest uh, complaint about them before is they were you know, environmentally unfriendly. Now the new battery storage, they're finding new elements that can be uh, uh, more safely, more safely, uh, uh, Re rejuvenated and uh, used again and again and again. So uh, you can also have the availability of battery storage, not only water storage. And yeah, as many parts of the world are now using battery storage, uh, they don't have the water availability to, to, uh, to store their, their energy. So uh, that should not be ignored uh, uh, as Ontario it seems to be ignoring all of this. Uh, Probably in my mind, because of uh, too big of a uh, too big too too much money being sent back and forth between uh, such companies as OPG. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Well, Mike, Mike you're correct. There have been huge improvements in battery storage, and the costs are coming down, and so that's that's good news. But again, our point is is simply just that. Ontario is in a very um, advantageous geographic position. Because we're so close to Quebec, we have an option that's not available in many other parts of the world. And, and in, our, in our recent report, we rep referenced the MIT study and the pollution probe study that have concluded that actually, in the case of Ontario, because we are next door to Quebec, then Quebec's hydroelectric reservoirs are at the moment the lowest cost storage option for Ontario wind and solar. Thanks, Jack. Um, Ron White, you're on. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you'll have to excuse my uh, COVID attire, but uh, anyways, um, thank you for hosting this meeting. I appreciate that. I am the regional sales manager for Entertech Global. Uh, in the U.S. We're a geothermal heat pump manufacturer. Um, we touched on it a little bit in there, or as mentioned, um, geothermal is going to be the best means of heating, cooling, hot water, and that helps us get away from uh, the, the necessity of gas. To add uh, solar to that makes that even better. We do offer a solar offering as well. Um, so, 
Oh, am I on now? No, your video's yeah. your video's not on, Ron. But that's okay. Sure. The audio's on. We heard okay. you. Okay, thank you. Um, but the combination of geothermal and solar is a great way to go green, to get away from, and to help meet this 2030 goal to, to get away from gas. I'm all in support of getting rid of gas. We don't need it. Uh, there's other means of heating and cooling that is affordable, and geothermal leads the way, because geothermal, depending on the manufacturer, is going to be anywhere from three to 500% efficient. So for every dollar you spend in electricity, you're getting that much that many dollars worth of energy in return. So definitely something to consider is with geothermal and solar. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. Um, Jen. Jen, did you still, or was that from before? Must have been from before. Uh, so <laughs> I'm unmuted now, okay? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, the Ford government at one point said they were uh, going to um, require uh, the teardown of, of some wind turbines. I haven't been following that. I'm not sure where that's at, whether the um, whether a petition to keep them going is appropriate or or what that situation is. I'm just wondering if anybody knows. There have been petitions, Jen, to um, prevent the teardown of those turbines. There was a couple of, um, I mean, the, the province canceled 750 projects, including a couple of really big ones. But I think they're going to, they're, uh, Brad, can you jump in? Um, I think at this point, it's really the, the discussions are all around compensation, not uh, proceeding with the project. So White Pines is definitely coming down. Uh, the project near Ottawa, where the government used the excuse of bats, despite the bat biologists saying there wasn't a problem, that one is being contested by the company in court. So that one may still come back to life. But the ones that had not already proceeded, the 750 that Angela's referring to under the FIT contracts, those are all gone. Thanks. Okay, so we're there. I have a couple of questions from the chat if we have a opening here. Yep. Um, there was a couple of notes about, you know, the, the more general need again to keep pressure on the Ford government and also to talk about the Ford government's actions overall. I just wanted to quickly point out to folks that there is a, a broad campaign to oppose the Ford government's um, environmental actions, including um, its recent decision to not require um, environmental Bill of Rights postings during the COVID crisis. And you can find out more about all that at OntarioNotForSale.ca. That's a province-wide initiative being run by our friends at Environmental Defense. Uh, for those of you who are interested in getting deeper into the local opposition. Um, one person asked if you have any demands specific to OPG. Well, o o OPG. Ontario Power Generation, they had the, the five uh, dirty coal-fired power plants, which were all closed down. And now, uh, now they have uh, five large um, gas-fired power plants. So they're the largest um, owner of gas-fired power plants in Ontario. They've got a, a gas-fired power plant in Windsor, one in Halton Hills, one on the Toronto waterfront, and, and two in, in Napanee including the largest gas-fired power plant in Canada. So, so Ontario Power Generation is once again um, a, a big source of greenhouse gas pollution. And what about pitching the Ford government on the potential cost savings as a way to offset the enormous costs of the current pandemic? 
Well, we that's a pitch we often make to them that if they if they switch away from high cost nuclear and go for for energy efficiency and renewables, they can lower their bills. They can Premier Ford can keep his promise to reduce our bills by by twelve percent. I mean that is the good news. Energy efficiency and renewables are now the lowest cost option to keep our lights on as well as the cleanest. So that's an argument we make, but so far it hasn't been successful. But again, we need the help from uh, everyone in Ontario. So, you know, if you if you meet Doug Ford or you meet one of his MPPs, make that pitch to him, please. And uh, would adding renewable uh, natural gas to our supply be a useful step? Well, it's one step forward if you get, uh, you know, uh, 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 renewable natural gas. It's 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 it basically biogas, and and so that would be a, a positive step in uh, towards uh, phasing out natural gas. Yes, and, and I believe if uh, Bullfrog Power has a has a renewable natural gas offering for homeowners. And somebody just raised the idea of wave power in the Great Lakes. Well, that's uh, an option I've never heard of. Uh, I think that's it for the chat for now. Go back to our audience. And there's no more questions from the audience. So, uh, you know, we, we managed to do this in under an hour, which is fantastic. Thank you, everybody, for checking in. I will add you all to our, um, our database and also please go to ontarioclimateaction.ca. You can see all our reports, learn more about this particular issue and sign the petition. By signing the petition, you allow us to stay in touch with you with, as the campaign unfolds. So we'll send you information as we move forward. But thank you all for being part of this. Feel free to email me with more questions. We'll keep the conversation going. This is the start of a, a long campaign maybe, so we'll be in touch with you. Thank you everybody and thank you Jack for all your excellent research over the in commitment to the Ontario environment over the decades. Thank you. And Brad, thanks for moderating, moderating questions. So I'll say goodbye to everybody and we'll stay in touch with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.